Hello, hello. I'm doing a lunch live because there is something I want to talk about. Hey everyone, hey, hey. Happy, uh, happy Wednesday, if, if, it's, if that's a good day. I think it's a better day than Tuesday, by the way. I feel like Tuesday, um, as my friend Danny always says, is the armpit of the week. Wednesday's a little better. I don't mind Monday. All right, so big news coming down in a lot of cases that we are covering. And so uh, I, 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 just, I just need to start going live here a bit. I think I'm gonna go live a couple times today. Um, we need to talk about the Jared Brightigan case, uh, also known as, you might know it as the Microsoft exec case, the Microsoft exec that was murdered. You might know it as the Stampin' Up case um, or the Shannon Gardner case. Um, let me go over it for a bit of you that are new here. I have links in the description of this video for all of our coverage on this case. I encourage everyone to get involved because this is a case that's going to need support. It's going to need attention because justice needs to be served for Jared, but also um, there's other stuff going on too. And we're going to talk about a custody battle going on. Um, yeah, hoping for justice for... Um, Oh, yeah, so much going on. Hello, hello, everyone. Hey, Mix Bunky. Um, all right, so uh, for those just catching up, Jared Brightigan was murdered February 16th, 2022, in front of his two year old baby girl who was in a car seat in the car. He got out, he was on a one way street in Jacksonville, Florida. He got out of the car to move a tire that was in the middle of the road. We now know, according to police, that the tire was there placed purposefully because it was a one-way road and it wasn't traveled quite a bit. Uh, he had to stop. He put one foot out of the car and he was gunned down. So in uh, January, January 25th, 2023, the first arrest was made, Henry Tennant, 61 years old, uh, as, as the person that shot Jared Brightigan. In, um, and then we go to March, March 16th, Mario Fernandez is arrested. Now, Mario Fernandez is a very important person in this case. It's Shanna Gardner's husband, Shanna Gardner Fernandez. Shanna Gardner is the ex-wife of Jared Brightigan, who was killed. So, um, Shanna Gardner's husband, now husband, Mario Fernandez is arrested. And then it was in August where things really kind of blew up and this case got a lot of attention that it had been needing and deserving because Shanna Gardner Fernandez was arrested. I think she's wanting to go by Shanna Gardner these days. I wonder why. Maybe she's trying to separate herself from her now husband. But she was arrested and charged in Jared Brightigan's murder. Her, not just her ex-husband, but the father to her twins her two, her two children, they were, um, you know, yeah. So uh, they had a very contentious custody battle after their divorce. They, uh, let me, let me get more cozy, by the way. Lunch lives, I need, okay, we good? Okay, I need to just like sit here. And um, I, I put this up, by the way, per request of others. They were getting car sick last time. Um, so, so, Severe custody battle. They, they, you know, Jared and uh, Shanna get divorced. Always, always a intense custody battle going on. Um, it just seemed like there was always something happening. And then all of a sudden, Jared's murdered. And these three people are arrested, Shanna, Gardner included. So we have a motive. It seems, like, interesting. You know, I mean, it, it seems, it's not interesting. The motive is clear, it seems to me. Um, you know. Anyway, uh, I wonder why. Contentious custody battle, wanting custody of the children. Makes sense. Um, you know, I guess I can't be certain of the motive, but, you know, that's where my brain leads me. I don't know about you guys. So let me read to you. Well, let me let me first finish. So, so then, before I read you, we're going to read this, by the way. I have some notes here. It's a Fox News digital uh, report that came out. The twins, there are two twins that Jared and his wife, Kirsten, 
his new wife, Kirsten. So, so Jared is heartbroken after divorcing Shanna and finds love with Kirsten. They have two more little girls. And one of those girls, again, was in the car seat when, uh, and saw her dad gunned down. Um, they, she helped raise the children. These are, you know, the twins, the twins that were Shanna and Jared's. Uh, been with them for, for years. They're now 11 years old. And since Jared's murder, Kirsten has not been able to see the kids. Now, I realize that, you know, she has no DNA to them. She's a stepmother. But her girls are their sisters. Her little girls were raised with these children. They're, they're all siblings, these four siblings. And these little girls have not seen. Um, not only did they lose their dad that night, they lost their brother and sister. Um, with Shanna now behind bars, people were hoping that maybe she might be able to start seeing the kids. So I'm assuming this is, this is what we're sort of seeing from all the news articles and from the Instagram page, justice for Jared B. Okay. Here, here is the title of this, the headline of this Fox News digital article. Parents of Jared Brightigan's ex-wife are patently lying in child custody documents after mom's murder arrest, according to a law expert. I'm just going to read to you this article, and I want you all to know that this Fox Digital article is also linked in the description of this video as well. This is an exclusive. The parents of Jared Bridegan's ex-wife, so Shanna Gardner's parents, and they own a multi-level marketing company, a craft company called Stamping Up, um, where they have demonstrators that share their crafts. Um, you know, they don't like people to, to pop the Stampin' Up! bubble. So I'm kind of grateful that Fox Digital uh, reported on this. And I think, again, that that's also why we need some attention on this case, because, you know, need some people to jump in and start popping a Stampin' Up! bubble. They, they, they like to keep things in the Stampin' Up! bubble. For those that don't understand what that means, go watch our last live. Again, those are linked in the description of this video. So, the parents, Shelly and Sterling Gardner, they live in Utah. Again, owners of this company, a wealthy, par wealthy people. Shanna Gardner is an heiress to uh, their fortune. So, the parents of Jared Brightigan's ex-wife, are asking a court to grant them custody of their grandchildren, the two children of Jared Brightigans. But in the petition, they appear to, to provide glaringly false information. With Brightigan dead and his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner-Fernandez, in jail and accused of his murder, her wealthy parents, Shelley and Sterling Gardner, want to keep the couple's 11-year-old twins. Not just keep them, but it seems to keep them from ever seeing their siblings. But, you know, the Gardners, Sterling and Shelley, seem to misrepresent where the children lived in the last five years and whether any other relatives have sought visitation. Many relatives have sought visitation, including, again, the mother to their siblings and the widow to Jared Brightigan. So in quotes now, coming to the court, quote, coming to the court and patently lying by filling out a form with false information warrants a complete dismissal of their application, end quote. A lawyer, Marilyn, I'm going to butcher this last name, Chinitz, sorry, sorry, Marilyn. Lawyer Marilyn stated, who represents, she represents Hollywood stars like Tom Cruise and Michael Douglas and their divorces. So this is her um, sharing this to Fox News Digital. Um, so, so again, Gardner Fernandez, 35, was arrested August 16th, the mother to the twins. She was arrested in Washington. Okay, so Washington State. In other words, she moved from Florida to Washington. We know those two states aren't close together. She moved from one corner of the country to the furthest possible other corner of the country as soon as her husband was arrested. Um, and that's where her, you know, her parents and the once ex-in-laws of Jared also moved to take care of the twins. Um, the 30, so he was killed again 19 months ago on February 16th, 2022 in front of his toddler daughter, Bexley. The petition that was filed in Benton County Superior Court in Washington 
stay, ask a straightforward question about res residency of the children. In quotes, it says, during the past five years, have any of the children lived outside of Washington State? Question mark. The gardeners reportedly checked no, N-O, in quotes, and then failed to fill out the next set of questions that asked for a comprehensive list of where the children have lived and with whom. Now, we all know here, obviously, that the children were living in Florida, where their poor father was murdered by, um, I mean, there's been no conviction, but three people are charged, including their own mother right now, including the daughter of these two that are looking to have, you know, put false information on this custody document to make sure no, let's make sure no one ever gets else gets custody of them but us. So obviously, they have lived outside of Washington State. We know that. So they check no and fail to fill out the next set of questions that ask for a comprehensive list of where the children have lived and with whom. Um, Gardner Fernandez and the children only moved from Florida in December 2022. Um, and then this is an opinion on Fox Digital, but to escape scrutiny from the highly publicized murder. I'm going to agree with their opinion on that, but it's not a journalistic statement. So they only moved there in December of 2022 to escape scrutiny from the highly publicized murder. I think that's probably true. Um, and maybe also because uh, there are great custody laws for grandparents in the state of um, Florida too. Or not Florida, Washington. Just so happens. Interesting, right? Washington has great custody laws for grandparents that want to get custody of their kids. A family, so the Gardners, whose primary residence is, is in Utah, bought Shanna Gardner herself a million-dollar home in Washington that became refuge to her and her twins before her arrest. The lawyer, uh, Marilyn, said the Gardners may have provided the inaccurate answer to ensure the case wasn't litigated in Florida, where the paternal grandparents live, but the maneuver could backfire. The court will look at that petition with some, some you know, They'll take an eye on that, according to the high-powered attorney. She added that it's unlikely that they misread the question, given that they both signed the legal document, as did their own lawyer, under penalty of perjury. Shanna Gardner-Fernandez, um, the Gardners, okay, so I'm going to keep going. The Gardners, thank you, Steph. Hey, everyone. Uh, offered another puzzling answer to the question. Do you know of anyone besides you and the parents who have or claim the rights to have a legal right to spend time with any of these children. And again, the gardeners checked no. But we know that Jared's widow, Kirsten Brightigan, with whom Jared shared two children, Bexley and London, have publicly, and it is true, they have publicly begged Gardner Fernandez and her parents for visitation. Just think about those little girls too, Bexley and London. In one day, they didn't just lose their father, they lost their sisters because they have not been able to see him and they have publicly begged for visitation. And this is what the grandparents are now choosing to do. I don't know, it's just, it's just interesting. After Gardner Fernandez's arrest, Kirsten publicly on television begged for the children to be reunited. We are a family, we love them, she told reporters. Despite my constant request to see or speak to them, I have been denied and continuously ignored, end quote. Jared's parents, so Jared, you know, they lose their son. Jared's parents are Gaylord and Joanna Brightigan. They have also asked to spend time with their grandchildren. Again, imagine that. They lose their son, and now they cannot see their own grandchildren. In quotes, the high-powered attorney, whose last name I can't pronounce, states, this is a highly publicized case, exactly. And we're here trying to make it even more highly publicized. Where there is a widow and paternal grandparents out there saying they want to see the kids, I can't even justify why they would make that false statement. I know, so, and I love that she says that. I love this quote, because think about that. It's true, like, not only is that a bold thing to say in a custody document, you know, they clearly want custody of the children. They, they clearly, it's more than just wanting custody. Actually, I'll give them that. They want custody of their grandchildren. Their daughter is in, in prison and their, their ex-son-in-law is dead. But, but to lie and to refuse visitation is a whole other thing. And 
it is truly like, think of the boldness of that like this is a highly publicized case like people are gonna find out we're gonna we're gonna learn and there are people out there like publicly stating we that that they want to see the children so for them to do this makes it even bolder like I agree with that like that adds to like the kind of whoa factor for me I can't even justify why they would be making this false statement under another question asking the gardeners to list the children's assets they omitted the twins sizable trust funds Shelley Gardner again owns the lucrative paper craft company Stampin Up and has financially supported her daughter Shanna Gardner Fernandez for most of her adult life according to court papers previously obtained by Fox News Digital. We also, by the way, have their entire, the Bridegans' entire divorce document, like everything, and their custody battle. We have that on our Patreon account, patreon.com slash hidden true crime. We have a lot of FOIA documents there uh, for multiple cases, um, and there's a link to our Patreon account also in the description of this video. So for anyone that wants to delve d deep into their custody battle, we have those. Fox News Digital has them. We, you know, it's 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 heartbreaking to read. Um, the gardeners who own homes across the countries did sell their oceanfront Jacksonville Beach vacation property for nearly four million three million uh, seven hundred thousand dollars last year, and I don't have the rest of the article. Must have left it inside. Um, I think this is important. I think that um, I think that this is a family. You know, Shanna Gardner hasn't even been extradited to Florida yet because she's been fighting fighting that. That's that's unusual. I've talked to some attorneys about that. That is that is an unusual move. So she was arrested in Washington. The crime happened in Florida, and now she's even fighting. You know, being extradited back to Florida. It shows to me that this family is going to fight at every you know, they have the money and they're going to fight. They're going to fight uh, and fight and fight just to start out right now saying, no, we, we're not even going to like easily let Shannon, you know, be extradited back to Florida so that she can face charges. Um, they're fighting it. They're fighting for custody of their grandchildren and have not let people see the children. And again, you know, I, you know, I don't know. But so, I recommend everyone checking out an Instagram account run by by Kirsten Bridegan, the, the widow of Jared. It's called Justice for Jared B. There's also a great Facebook group called Justice for Jared B that I'm a part of. But but the Instagram account, Kirsten will share statements and updates. And she shared an update. So I, I want to read it. I wrote it down here. Um, when this Fox News Digital article came out, this is from... Uh, the Justice for Jared B. Instagram account. This, in quotes, this is abhorrent. The court docs and their actions speak for themselves. End quote. And then they posted a picture of Shelley and Sterling Gardner and the quote from the article that says, during the past five years, have any of the children lived outside of Washington State? End quote. No. Um they check no and fail to fill out the next set of questions that ask for a comprehensive list of where the children have lived and with who, meaning completely living out, leaving out Kirsten Bridegan and her daughters who miss their brother and sister. I just wanted, I wanted to share that. I want to keep this case at the forefront. Um, yes, yes, Amy, this is the man. And again, we have all of our... Um, I really encourage everyone to watch our coverage of this. Again, all the links are in the description of this video. And um, all of the, and then the article that I read is also in the description of this video. Share it. Go um, join the, the Justice for Jared B. Facebook page or the Instagram account. Um, this is a case we want to cover and see through. Uh, because like I said, I think there is going to be a lot of fighting uh, that's, uh, we have again, the custody battle documents and they're in our Patreon account and there was fighting to the bitter end. Um, not necessarily by Jared. And we have delved deep into this case with psychologist, Dr. John Mathias, my husband. And I really recommend taking a look at those and 
this is this is a case that you know I I think I'd want to go to the trial and see this through. So that was really important to bring that up and keep this case in the forefront. I appreciated this article by Fox Digital. Uh, you know, one other thing too, I, I think it just shows there just seems to be a lack of empathy and kindness sort of exuding from this family. So, so Sarah Douglas is the CEO of Stampin' Up! And that, you know, Shelly Gardner has a blog. She keeps published. Sarah Douglas, the CEO, has an Instagram account that she keeps public and published. It's actually called a Sarah thing. And I was scrolling through it. And so first off on Shelly Gardner's blog, again, the founder of Stampin' Up!, the mother of Shanna, they complained originally about Shanna not being invited to Jared's funeral. Duh. Um, and they did, so thus they didn't let the twins go. The twins didn't go. Shanna didn't go. You know, of course, of course, Kirsten wanted the twins there at the funeral. Um, and they, so they, they did this whole photo shoot in this event of a memorial for Jared. They referred to him as the, their dad, the twins' dad, never mentioned how he was killed or that he was murdered, just an unexpected death and shared all these photos of this alleged memorial at the, at the Gardner house because as they complained that nobody let Shanna Gardner go to the funeral. So they did their own thing and the twins weren't allowed to go and they, they just did their own thing. Well, I noticed on like Sarah Douglas's Instagram, a Sarah thing, that there was a picture from Jared's memorial. And it was of her and Shanna laughing together with a couple of their other sisters. And this is just what I mean. So like this is Jared's, Jared Brightigan's memorial after he's murdered. And it's of Sarah and it's of Shanna and, and a couple other sisters. And it says, happy National Sibling Day. It was so fun to grow up in a family of girls. Then it states, happy, in quotes, happy moments like this are my favorite. Like, is there a disconnect or what? Like, there just seems to be a coldness. Like, this is Jared's funeral. They're all giggling, laughing. And then she says, happy moments like this are my favorite. Look, I know. And it could be that happy moment they told a joke. So I'm probably being too hard on that particular post. But I wanted to use it as an example as just... I think that that is an example of what I'm seeing as a whole. So while if if I have seen if I had seen empathy in other places publicly because they have such a public um, they have such a public format, then I maybe wouldn't be using that. Maybe it was a joke they told, a happy moment, or whatever the case may be. Um, but but it, it's what I'm seeing as a whole, and I read articles like this and. I just, I want justice for Jared and I want justice for those, those twins too. They lost their dad and they'll, they'll be losing their mother. It's heartbreaking. Those twins are absolute victims and I want them to be surrounded, surrounded by family and people who love them. All of their grandparents, their stepmom, their sisters, their half sisters, their paternal grandparents, everyone. All right, I'm going to go get ready for the day because I haven't done that. I just wanted to quickly do this live, but expect another live later uh, because I want to talk about the Tim Ballard case, actually. Uh, it's another case that John and I have covered, and um, two days ago now, it was Monday, a massive civil lawsuit came down in the Third Judicial Court in Salt Lake County, 90 pages of several women that went by their initials, accusing Tim Ballard of, of sexual assault. And, um, you know, John and I did cover Tim Ballard before this lawsuit came down about nine days ago. We did a two hour live on Tim Ballard. For those who are asking who Tim Ballard is, I'll, I'll state that once again. So Tim Ballard is the subject and the inspiration behind the 2023 movie Sound of Freedom, which is about children who uh, were rescued um, I'm being careful with my words. I've learned that, that YouTube does not like me to say certain words when it comes to the Tim Ballard case. But, so I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Uh, you maybe put it in chat. So, so children that were rescued, um, in, in the Sound of Freedom movie, 
And then Tim Ballard is the founder of Operation Underground Railroad. It's a nonprofit that says they they do F, they work to save children. It's all about saving children, save the children. And so he is a man who now has an international platform um, who is well known, well loved. And it's why this case is intrigued, John and I. We've always talked about Operation Underground Railroad and questioned the best practices they were using to help children. We've always had an eye on Tim Ballard and had concerns about him. But, but again, he's been this well loved person. So John and I tackled that case um, and what we thought was coming, uh, nine days ago, we recommend that. And anyway, this, the civil lawsuit, I'll just say this, like, so it's 90 pages came down Monday. I stayed up late Monday reading it. Um, I didn't finish it until early the next morning. Uh, I took my dream, my, and so I fell asleep reading it, but then I woke up at about 4am to finish it. I, I, it is, um, it's jaw dropping for those who have read it. I, I think you would agree with me for those that haven't read it. Trigger warning, like be careful. Um, it's, it's upsetting. It's shocking. And, um, yeah, it's, I believe the women, I believe the women, they are detailed accounts. They corroborate each other and it's really upsetting. But the thing that I want to talk about later today is what I've been kind of talking about already, screaming it actually for a while, despite people not being happy about it. Because, uh, but I've been I've been saying for months now that Tim Ballard is running around with the same group that Chad Daybell's running around with. That's one of the main reasons I haven't trusted him is the people that he's been running around with and preparing a people and the firm expo and. Jason Mao and 